Please, would you stand? A very warm welcome indeed to St George's Cathedral, to those present here in person, and all of you who are united with us in the broadcast. We are gathered to join in reflection and to give thanks for those who have donated their bodies for medical and surgical education, training and research. A very special welcome to you, relatives and friends. And it's very good indeed to be united here in the cathedral with medical students and staff from the various medical schools. I'd also like to welcome the spiritual representatives from the medical schools and Professor Anthony Warrens, who will be giving the address. It's a great privilege for St George's to once again host this very special service when we gather to remember those who have given a great and generous gift to future generations. Good morning and welcome to today's memorial service in which we remember and thank all of our donors across the medical schools in London and the southeast of England. I'm Dr Paula Vickerton. I'm the anatomy lead at Barts and the London Medical School, Queen Mary University of London. We are one of eight medical schools making up the London and South East Committee of Anatomists. Anatomy is the foundation of medical education, comprising of the language in which medical professionals communicate and the fundamental map of the body in both health and disease. Every year at Queen Mary, we have over 800 healthcare students engaging in anatomy teaching. These students may be undergraduate medical students, they may be postgraduate physicians associates, or even clinicians engaging in professional courses to revisit and consolidate their understanding. This teaching is centered around and relies upon donations made by altruistic individuals. Over the past year, as with the rest of the world, we have faced difficulties in how to deliver our teaching safely. In many cases, teaching has turned to online alternatives, and it is abundantly clear that there is no substitute for the real thing. The variation and complexity which exists within each of us cannot be captured by a computer model. An understanding of this complexity is vital for our medical professionals to be able to deliver a high quality of care. So on behalf of the London and South East Committee of Anatomists, I would like to extend my thanks to yourselves and to your loved ones. In their decision to donate their body, they have given an incredible gift to today's students, tomorrow's doctors and patients for generations to come. Good morning, ladies, gentlemen, and fellow students. Firstly, I'd like to express my gratitude and thank Dr. Vickerton for the opportunity to speak to you all today. Ever since my first year at BART, the opportunity to learn from our donors was exciting, yet nerve-wracking. My first cut, terrifying. I'd never before considered the life the human before me had led until that point, and standing here today talking to you, the schools, and the family, it still astounds me. To the donors, having spent over 500 hours in our dissection labs, not entirely by choice, I may add, you would think I'd get sick of it, but I never do. I'm still amazed at what I can learn and find, and I remember vividly my first anatomy lessons, 
And although I could not tell you what I was learning about, I can still remember vividly what structures I was looking at and seeing. I remember a sense of nervousness and anxiety, but also awe at your selflessness. You have taught me so much. You have allowed me to learn directly from the human body. I only hope through my career, I can utilize the knowledge you have given me and repay the debt by helping others as you have helped me. To the family, the generosity of everyone involved and the sacrifice is something I aspire to and look up to. Here I am going into my fifth year at Barts and although I like to think my very limited anatomy knowledge has come leaps and bounds, I carry this knowledge forwards with the intention of making sure your sacrifice was not in vain. I try to treat every patient with the kindness and generosity you have shown me. You have not just helped me, but thousands of us across the country. And I'm sure I speak for all of us when I say what a tremendous opportunity this has been. Thank you. Tell me and I forget, show me and I remember, involve me and I learn. This Chinese proverb succinctly displays the value of how I learned anatomy. I would like to express my gratitude for the gifts that your loved ones made in donating their bodies and the impact that this has had on my medical education and the education and lives of so many. Your loved one became for us our first patient, a patient who would probably teach us more than any other patient. I remember one of our first sessions us as new students marvelling at the size of the sciatic nerve. A basic concept, the idea that the nerve supply most of the lower limb would be roughly the diameter of our index finger, amazed us all. Contrasting this with experiences only a few months later, we would be carefully dissecting the heart to look at more intricate structures and more complex pathologies. I see how much our confidence had developed, and this correlates with the amount of knowledge that we had absorbed in such a short amount of time through this practical approach. The experience allowed us to begin our medical careers more sure-footed than would otherwise be possible. It is a tremendous legacy that your loved ones have left behind by becoming a teacher who has helped so many students so that we may go on to help generations to come. My initial trepidation of hands-on anatomy learning was soon replaced by an enthusiasm to learn everything I could from such an opportunity. I was surprised to find the anatomy lab soon became a place of warmth and familiarity for me where I became so actively involved and meant so much for my personal development. The selfless contribution made by your loved ones bestowed a responsibility on us, something my friends and I often discussed and took very seriously. Each body was treated with the utmost respect and we felt ourselves to be grateful custodians. 
Thinking about how to properly express how much this experience has meant to me, I find the words almost inadequate. It has been a great privilege that I will take with me through my career and life and an opportunity for which I am forever indebted. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Anthony Warrens. I am Dean for Education at Barts and the London School of Medicine and Dentistry, faculty of Queen Mary University of London. And it's uh, my responsibility to look after all branches of education within uh, our university. I'm fortunate that I've had the opportunity to make a number of significant uh, developments oversee a number of developments in our faculty over the time of my deanship. But one that I'm most proud of is anchoring good anatomy education within our university. Because as you've heard from our excellent head of anatomy education, Dr. Vickerton, just a few moments ago, there is no substitute for the real thing. I am uh, still a practicing clinician, and on a day-by-day -day basis, I still see patients. And I draw on the knowledge that I acquired as a medical student myself on a regular basis. We're not just talking, though, about trainee doctors. We are a large faculty, and the other faculties uh, represented today similarly teach students who are going to become doctors, dentists, physician associates, paramedics, and many others. And so the reach of what we are talking about today is very extensive. Many, many healthcare professionals have benefited from the opportunities properly to understand human anatomy that flow from the very generous donations of the individuals whom we are honoring today. And it is very uh, appropriate that we are undertaking that honour here in this very imposing venue. It's appropriate because this anchors this donation, this anchors this generosity in a very important and solemn environment that uh, underscores the selflessness of the act that we are talking about today. This is a selflessness that has led an individual as a final act of his or her life on this earth to
to lead them to support individuals who themselves want to care for others throughout their professional lives. That is indeed an honourable action, and it is therefore appropriate that we should honour it here in this very auspicious and appropriate environment. They may have left this world in a physical sense, but their legacy truly remains. Their legacy to help us healthcare professionals anchor our knowledge in, rea in reality, truly noble and truly honorable. Throughout my career, I have undertaken innumerable practical procedures, often on very ill patients. And faced by that patient, they rightly required of me a real understanding of the anatomy of the structures beneath their skin. They had a reasonable expectation that I was well trained, that I had seen what happens within the human body, the structures underlying the skin, and therefore I was in a position to deliver the best possible safe care to my patients. And I have to tell you that those student days were never far from my mind on many occasions looking after my patients. And I drew upon those experiences time and time again, experiences that only could have been acquired as a result of the generosity of the donors from whose generosity we benefited. We get incited we gained insights and knowledge in order to become better practitioners, and that is insight and knowledge that would otherwise have been inaccessible to us. And I was only one student to benefit from the donor with whom I worked. There were dozens of other students on that one individual, and each of us went on to have careers spanning many decades looking after many hundreds, in some cases thousands, of patients. So therefore it is absolutely no exaggeration to say that this act of selflessness by one individual had a knock-on benefit that brought significant benefits and advantage to many, many people over many decades. Numbers certainly in the hundreds, probably in the thousands. How many of us can say that? How many of us can say that an action that we took benefited so many of our, human, of our fellow humans in the years after we have passed on? What a glorious legacy. This, for the, this is something that should be a matter of very significant pride to the loved ones who are here today or listening to the, the, the recording of this uh, ceremony today, because they too should take pride from that enormous contribution. In order to make a contribution, we do not need to be memorialized in a statue or a blue plaque. We need to know the meaning of what we did and what our loved ones did. And my message today is that that meaning was very, very significant, because that contribution was probably greater than many that are memorialized in more conventional ways. It is a value that goes beyond many other publicly recognized honors. It is a contribution of true value that adds luster to all the other achievements of their lives, and it is in itself an achievement of which we can all be enormously proud. And so, on behalf of us academics who have the honor to work in universities training healthcare professionals, on behalf of students who have benefited from these bequests and donations, and probably most importantly, on behalf of the patients and very large numbers who have benefited greatly from this very generous grift. On behalf of us all, 
I would like to say a very profound and heartfelt thank you.
Let us pray. We gather together, here in the cathedral as well as at home, from all walks of life, backgrounds and cultures, united in the common bond of thankfulness. We give thanks for the lives of those we remember and honour today. We give thanks for the love they gave and the love they received. We give special thanks for their generous gift to medical education. Through their gift comes the forming of a new generation of medical and surgical practitioners. We remember and pray for those who have died. And we now take a few moments to silently name those known to us. We give thanks for all the benefits of medical science. We honour all those engaged in medical education. We give thanks for those whose lives are dedicated to promote healing knowledge through learning and research in our medical and dental schools, praying especially for those who teach and study medicine Give them wisdom in their learning, imagination in their research, and compassion in their care for patients. Sustain in them their reverence for life and the search for wholeness in healing, that the lives of many may be enriched. We take a few moments of quiet to remember those in the medical professions. We pray for you who grieve the loss of loved ones for your journey of life in the days and years to come. May the peace of God go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. And may he bring you home, rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Uniting our prayers in the words that Jesus taught, we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Please be upstanding for the final blessing. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go in peace.